Shabbat Shalom. Welcome, dear beloved, before the presence of the living God. We bless you. We are so glad to get together with you once again. Shall we both bow down before the Lord in prayer? Father, we thank you for this time together before your holy presence. We pray that you will prepare our hearts, Lord, for you are a good God and a merciful God and a great God. And we concentrate in your goodness and your grace to have us together before you and bring in your word into our hearts. Let our ears, Father, be open to hear what your spirit is saying. Let our hearts be open to receive your word and cherish it within us that it may become life within us, Lord. And let our eyes be open that we may see what your spirit is doing by the discernment of your Holy Spirit within our hearts, Lord. Above all, have your way today. Let the spirit of your word come upon us, Lord Father, and your name be glorified in all of us, in our hearts and in our family. Today, Father, in the name of Jesus, we bind the works of darkness. We cut asunder every plan of the wicked one against your word and your people. And we ask you, Lord, that a wall of fire will surround every heart and every household of everyone that is listening to your word today in Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen, Amen. Well, the theme of today is called the gift. In the early hours of the morning a couple of days ago, I woke up and I wasn't fully awake, but I was fully aware of a dream that I had been having. So when the dreams are very vivid and very strong, then I stay there in the twilight zone and I remain quiet, allowing the Holy Spirit to, to remind me of the details and to tell me what it means. So I was quietly meditating in this dream and the dream went as such. I was somewhere with a teenager girl who for the sake of the story we'll call her Sophia. We'll just name her Sophia. This girl was rather quiet but as we spent time together she began to speak and uh, she belonged to a humble family, she told me that. And her parents work very hard to make ends meet. She also, in our conversation, showed me a guitar. And this was a present she had received from her parents who sacrificially gathered some money and bought her a guitar because they knew that she loved playing the guitar. As I heard her story, I began to understand how she felt because the guitar she was showing me was a beautiful instrument, very, very nice, but she hardly played it because doing so, it brought unto her some sadness. And this sadness to her heart stopped her playing. So when she was telling me the story, I began to realize how she felt. Sophia's parent, knowing how much she liked playing the guitar, has done a great sacrifice to buy it for her as a gift. She was so happy with her gift. Oh, she was so, so excited that very quickly she began to learn how to play it, how to use it. And so it went for a while as she began to play the guitar and getting better at it. When one day she was invited to a gathering in the house 
of very wealthy family. These people were very kind. They were very friendly. Their son was a humble, talented young man who also played the guitar. As a matter of fact, there were many guitars in that household. It seems as if uh, uh, all the guests were involved with somehow the instrument of guitar. Sophia took her guitar to that party. Somebody told Sophia that this young man was accepted to play in the Philharmonic Orchestra. That is a great honor for, for any instrument player. Now, when Sophia, after the party, when Sophia left the house, she left the house with this young man's guitar and left hers in the house. As time went by, her conscience showed her that what she had done was wrong. But she felt embarrassed and ashamed to go back to that house and take the guitar of the young man back to him. And also, she, somewhere in her heart, she also felt that his instrument was nicer than her second-hand guitar. As a matter of fact, the parents could not afford for a brand new one. So they bought her a second-hand guitar in a second-hand shop. I, talking with her, encouraged her in this dream to be strong, to do what is right in the sight of God and in the sight of man, and to return this guitar to her, to the, to the rightful owner. She agreed. Isn't that wonderful? To come to repentance to agree to do what's right in the sight of God and in the sight of man. For the word of God says, it's better to obey than sacrifice. Better repentance also than sacrifice. Obedience than sacrifice. While there is still breath in all of us, there is always hope to make things right with God and with man, isn't it? Continuing with the dream, she agreed to do what's right. She wrote in a letter her apologies and she wrote her own address there. She folded it, put it in an envelope and placed it under the door in the house where the party was. It happened that that family no longer lived there. But the new owners knew the previous owners and so they handed the letter to them. The letter got to the hands of that family. And so Sophia received a letter through the post, written by the mother of the young man, and he said this, I'll read it to you. Dear Sophia, thank you for your letter. We accept your apologies. We are very grateful to you. We had no address to return your instrument back to you, and since you did not come back to take it, we accepted it as a gift from you. Please, Feel free to keep my son's guitar as a gift of appreciation from us. Since then, our son has used it. The, the, the guitar, our son has used it in all his performances. It happened to be one of the finest vintage guitars ever made which now is no longer available to be purchased. This guitar has become part of my son's life. It is amazing sound, plus God's given 
ability to my son to bring forth those sounds have made him famous. So thank you, dear Sophia. May you be blessed forever. Wow. The dream ended there. And I meditated. Wow. What a story. <laughs> and what did it all mean? So I began to think, okay, what happened? The parent, Sophia's parents were, were poor people. They were not rich or wealthy. And uh, they made sacrifices to buy, to give her that gift. So the gift that Sophia received from the parent was the result of a sacrifice. Such a deep love they had for her that they were happy to sacrifice themselves so she could have that gift. And it is amazing the comparison with the scriptures when Jesus, for, for the love of God, for mankind, make himself a sacrifice that we may live. So I, it reminded, that, it, that reminded me of the sacrifices we make for the sake of love count to God because God the Father gave his son and he became a sacrifice for all of us because he loved us and wants us to have eternal life. And look, let's see what the scriptures say. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and the verse 9. It says this in the um, Holzman translation. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, wasn't he in heaven? He had all the richness. Though for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Somehow I thought a connection of that scripture and how this parent sacrificed and how Jesus sacrificed for us that we may be enriched in his poverty. You know, the Lord sits in his throne. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, he rules and reigns forevermore. And he's always watching what man would do with the circumstances which they are given, whether they are wealthy or whether they are needy. God is always watch, watching us. What do we do with the circumstances which we are given? Indeed, this parent did an act of love, a Christ-like action, to bless and enrich the life of their daughter. Now, just like the parent gave a gift to the daughter, Jesus also gave gifts. So we know, and, and this is not just to believers. Jesus gave gifts to mankind. How generous, how wonderful, how precious. Let's look what it says in the scriptures in Ephesians 4. Verse 8 says, Therefore it is said, when he, Jesus, ascended on high, he led captivity captive. He led a train of vanquished foes. And he bestowed gifts to men, on men. So what are these gifts? How amazing the love of God that having been crucified, buried, died, buried, and resurrected, he doesn't live without 
leaving something behind. And that was gifts for all men, for all mankind, men, women, children. And that's why we're so amazed, whether believers or not believers. We're so amazed. Sometimes we hear people that sing like angels. And we think, oh, how wonderful if this person will come to know the Savior. Other people have amazing gift with instruments musical instrument other ones have amazing gift in science god gave gift to men but there is one amazing gift that god the father gave and that is the gift of salvation through his son in john chapter 3 verse 16 this is scripture you probably know it by heart he says, for God so greatly loved and dearly praised the world that he gave up his only begotten son. That so that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, shall not come to destruction or be lost, but have eternal last life. <coughs> pardon me, everlasting life. He was pleased to give his son that we may live through him. What a wonderful gift. If only everyone will realize how blessed we are to receive that gift. <coughs> Excuse me. And yet, there is more. God also gave a gift that cannot be compared with any earthly gift ever given. And I can think <coughs> and compare what it meant that a special guitar that the humble parent gave their daughter which became the best ever vintage guitar which no longer can be sold or bought or cannot be bought they're not making it anymore and that is such a precious gift they gave to Sophia. And I know that perhaps Sophia didn't know, she didn't have an understanding of the preciousness of that guitar and was happy to exchange it for a common guitar, very nice one, but common. And therefore we can see in the scriptures in a minute how some people could, just by not knowing, let go a wonderful, marvelous gift of the Spirit for an earthly gift. So let's look. In Luke, the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 13 in the Amplified Version, it says, If you then, evil as you are, know how to give good gifts, gifts that are an advantage to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask and continue asking him. You see, I could compare that wonderful vintage guitar as the gift of the Holy Spirit. But sometimes because we do not know where it comes from, where it goes, as the Bible says, 
We rarely have other gifts. And this is what happened to Sophia. She did not know what she had. And sometimes, brothers and sisters, some of us who have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, we neglect it. We spend our time using our mouth for other kind of things rather than to express the Holy Spirit. Whatever words God gives to us through the Holy Spirit. In Matthew 16, verse 25, it says, For whosoever is bent on saving his temporal life, his comfort, his security here, shall lose it eternal life. And whosoever loses his life, his comfort, his security here in the world, for my sake shall find it meaning life everlasting. This is a profound scripture. This is the exchange that kind of happened with these guitars. This is how I felt that, that, that there was an exchange. And this change is was what Sophia thought it was better and nicer because it appealed and it brought a comfort and a certain form of security. She felt good with that. Taking somebody else's guitar because he comes from a wealthy family. It must be a good thing. You know, sometimes money is not a sin, but the love of it, the worship of it. It's a curse because we miss an amazing things that God has in the store for us through the love of money. And I'm not condemning uh, Sophia because Sophia is not a real person, <laughs> but it's a person put in the dream to, to make us think. Are we exchanging the precious blessing of the inter eternal life we are given through the sacrifice of Christ for the comforts and what seems this false security that the world can offer? As it is said in Matthew 16, 25, for those that seek that comfort, for those that seek that earthly life, that carnal satisfaction and carnal security will lose the eternal life. But those that are willing to give up, they are willing to forsake all those comforts and securities and, and, and uh, enjoyments of the earthly life will find themselves continuing walking in eternal life. Now we know that there are different gifts. So we know that the mother and the father of the young man has given that guitar as a gift. And it was a gift especially for him. But we also know the parents of Sophia have given Sophia a gift. It's not the same gift, but they've given Sophia a gift. And what I'm I, I was medit while I was meditating, the Lord was reminding me that each and every one of us are given gifts, as we read the scripture earlier on. And the gifts that we are given are for purposes of God that will cause us to fulfill His plan for our lives. You know, the scriptures and the prayer that the Lord Jesus gave the disciples? As it is in heaven, let it be in the earth. So God has plans in heaven. Purposes that are far greater than what we can imagine or even think of or even ask for. 
far, far great that we cannot fathom. And these purposes are meant to be fulfilled in earth by the grace of God through the gifts that he gives us to fulfill a specific purpose. Brothers and sisters, and I talk to all the ladies, isn't it true we all want to move in the power of the Holy Ghost? We, want to, we all want to heal and, and uh, we want to be instruments of prophecy and it's wonderful. And in these last days, the, in this, the Lord will do amazing things through his people like never before in this age to come. But this is not the main focus we ought to have. Because let us remember, it is not us who heal, but he who dwells in us. It is not us who prophesy, but the Spirit of God in us. It is not us who raise the dead, but the mighty power of God within us. It is no longer I who live, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I live now in the flesh, I live by the faith of Christ who loves me and gave his life for me. Not even my own faith is enough. But we have the faith of Christ because Christ is inside of us and we can use his faith to do his mighty work. But if our focus is on being that person that will do the mighty works because we want everybody to see and everybody to know how great we are, we miss the target, haven't we? But it is normal for all of us to want to be used of God and to give glory to God in everything we do and say. And that's correct. There's no sin there. But we must make sure that we don't make an idol of the gifts of God, that we not make an idol on the works of the Holy Spirit, that we not make an idol of the people whom God uses as his vessels. Let us think that way. Because if not, we miss the target. It is Christ in us, the hope of glory. Isn't it? Now let's talk about the different gifts. And let's look in the word of God. What are the different gifts? In Romans chapter 12, verse 6 to verse 8, Amplified Bible, I'm going to read. Verse 6. Having gifts faculties, talents, qualities. Isn't it so? Whether believers or unbelievers, we have faculties and talents and qualities given by God. These differ according to the grace that God gives us. So it's got nothing to do with us, but by his grace. By his grace, we can pray. By his grace, we can cry. By his grace, we can walk with God. By his grace, we are saved. Let us use them, meaning the gifts. He whose gift is prophecy, let him prophesy according to the proportion of his faith. Verse 7. He whose gift is practical service, let him give himself to serving. He who teaches, to teaching. He who exhorts, to encourage. To his, exhort to his exhortation. He who contributes, let him do it in simplicity and liberality. He who gives aids and superintends, let him do it with zeal and singleness of mind. He who does acts of mercy with genuine, cheerful and joyful eagerness. So here we have the gifts and the recommendations of the Lord concerning these gifts. So God gives us these gifts for us to stir them and use them enough in practice so they are perfected in us. In other words, in other words Christ in us. 
manifesting, manifesting through the perfection of his gifts, the glory of God. Now, there are gifts of the Spirit. These gifts are given by the power of the Holy Spirit. So, the greatest gift, together with Christ, is the gift of the Holy Spirit. The first is the gift of salvation through Christ's sacrifice. And then the gift of the Holy Spirit that empowers us and enables us to do God's work. Because it is Him, the Lord God Almighty, through Jesus the Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit that enables us and empowers us to do God's will. So it is not us, but Christ in us, and it's not our own, but it's the Spirit. So by our flesh, we can do lots of work, do this, do that, we do this, we do that, and all that, and sometimes we even glorify for that. But it doesn't give life. It is not of the Spirit. It doesn't have power. It's called works, but not power. How many do we know, or how many of us know, that when a person is speaking in the power of the Holy Spirit will touch our hearts. We will know and discern that it's no longer that person. Somehow we are beginning to discern that it's God, except for he who knows nothing or he who knows not begins to glorify man and think, oh, how wonderful, pastor such and such, or oh, prophet so and so, or evangelist so and so. They are wonderful. They are willing vessels of the Lord to be honored, but not more than God. To be lifted up, but not more than God. Brothers and sisters, make no God of no man. For it is God himself who uses man as a vessel. And please, don't go around glorifying the people of God. Honor them, but don't glorify them. Because it can cause them to stumble. Amen. In... 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 11 says this. I will read to you. It's uh, on the Amplified Bible. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1 to 11. Now about the spiritual gift, the special endowment of supernatural energy, brethren, I do not want to be misinformed. I don't want you to be misinformed. You know that when you were hidden or without Christ, you were led off after idols and could not speak habitually as in Paul's directed and whenever the occasion might arise. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one is speaking under the power and influence of the Holy Spirit of God can ever say, Jesus be cursed. And no one can really say Jesus is my Lord except by and under the power and influence of the Holy Spirit. Now, there are distinctive varieties and distributions of endowments of gift of extraordinary power distinguishing certain Christians one from the other due to the power of divine grace operated in their souls by the Holy Spirit. And they vary, but the Holy Spirit remains the same. And there are distinctive varieties of service and ministrations, but it is the same Lord who is served. Not serving man, serving God. And there are distinctive varieties of operation of working to accomplish things 
that it is the same God who inspires and energizes them all in all. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the evidence, the spiritual illumination of the Spirit for good and for profit. To one is given in and through the Holy Spirit the power to speak, a message of wisdom, and to another the power to express a word of knowledge and understanding according to the same Holy Spirit. To another, wonder working, faith by the same Holy Spirit. To another, the extraordinary power of healings by the same one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophetic insight, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose of God. To another, the ability to discern and distinguish between the utterances of truth and true spirits and the false ones, to another various kinds of unknown tongues, to another the ability to interpret such tongues. I'm talking about tongues that are spoken in meetings and congregations, which is the Holy Spirit coming forth, that for be able to operate in that gift, you will have to have received the Holy Spirit in the first place, right? and be able to speak in the language of heaven in the first place before you can be used by the Holy Spirit on a congregation. Amen. 11. And all these gifts, achievements, and abilities are inspired and brought to pass by one and the same Holy Spirit who are portions to each person individually exactly as he chooses. Amazing. There's another thing that the Lord was showing me and it's got to do with honoring. Sophia missed the target in honoring her mom and dad because he exchanged the wonderful sacrificial gift for something that belonged to someone else. And in Matthew 15, verse 4, tells us this, For God commanded honor your father and mother, and he who curses and reviles or speaks evil or abuses or treats improperly his mother and father, let him surely come to his end. Wow, that's a strong word. Then God shows us that we should honor all people everyone. Now, sometimes when we have troubles with people, we forget to honor them. Sometimes we honor those that are high above and forget to honor those that we think they are below. Sometimes, you know, it's the simplest of all people that don't talk much. Does They are not seem to be used much of God are the ones that move in the greatest power of the Holy Spirit behind the curtains. <laughs> so, let us be discerning and let us give honor to all men, women, children. Because in Romans 13 verse 7 says, Render to all men, they are due. Taxes, revenue, respect. To whom respect is due. And honor to whom honor is due. So God is calling us to give honor. If somebody is behaving in dishonor, well, we might not indulge, but doesn't mean that we have to look down upon people in our hearts because we have disagreements. Amen. Matthew 5 verse 16 says, <coughs> pardon me, let your light shine before men. And they may see your normal excellence and your praiseworthy, noble and good deeds and recognize and honor and praise and glorify your Father who is in heaven. You see, why is God saying this? That we may not be deceived 
by the enemy. But we not fall in error to think that light is our own light. That light is the light of the Lord. And when we are encouraged by God to shine this light, is with with all with good deeds, moral excellence, with praiseworthy actions, and noble, noble ways, is because God will be honored by man. Our loving Heavenly Father will be honored. People will know we are the children of the Most High God. We are the children of the bright light, Jesus Christ. So, the light we ought to shine is God's light, God's righteous ways for the glory of our loving Father. And then, my beloved, is as we see in this story, in this dream, at the end of the story, that little second-hand guitar was the finest. And as we spoke, it represented the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that young man received it from Sophia because Sophia never went to get it back. So received it as a gift and used it and became famous. You see, when we allow the Holy Spirit to do the will of God through us, the world will think of us as famous. But really, it is Christ in us, the hope of his glory. So let us remember to honor God with all the gift that he has given us. Let us remember to seek God for the greater gifts, for greater glory to him. Let us remember to honor our Father as we see the Holy Spirit using the yielded vessels of men and women and children of God. If we are coming to this age where God is to be glorified through his vessels. I encourage you to meditate in these words as I will also. May these words do a mighty work in your heart. May your conscience be washed. So whatever the Holy Spirit is convincing us of. And may the blood of Jesus sanctify our hearts our minds, our whole being, that we may walk worthy of his call. And until we meet again, dear loved, beloved ones, may you be blessed. Amen.